BioBalance HealthCast, Episode 173, Women and Cancer. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast. This week we're going to spend our time talking about cancer. Cancer is such a frightening thing when when people hear it, they automatically assume whoever they're hearing it about, and especially themselves, I'm going to die. The reality is that the death from cancers of all kinds mm-hmm. rates have declined dramatically since 1975. From Thank 1975 yeah. to now, mm-hmm. uh, the longevity rates of survivable cancers have increased exponentially. And so, so now people have survived with cancer. People have survived with cancer. Mm-hmm. Cancer can still kill you. Uh, but so can heart attacks and overeating and driving recklessly in the snow and, and jumping Alcohol. out of airplanes. Yeah, it, it, Cigarettes. A lot of things. Okay. <laughs> but the reason we're going to talk about it is because it's such a sensitive issue, especially in women's health, when you talk about uh, vaginal cancers and breast cancers. Uterine, uterine cancers. Uterine cancers. Ovarian uh, and breast. Then women are legitimately and rightfully worried about that. So Kathy's always monitoring research and information about it that comes out, especially research and information that goes to the issue of hormone replacement, which Mm -hmm. is a primary focus of what you do. So we thought we would start today with a discussion in general about cancer and cancer survivability and talk a little more specifically about breast cancer. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. So so what is a cancer? I mean, so very, very good question. (laughs) Um, Cancer is begins as a cell that loses its ability to die. Basically, it becomes it becomes a cell that continues to multiply and divide. And all of our other cells have a, a time limit, a number of times they can divide and then they die. So a cancer cell is one that is able to continue to divide and it has a different genetics than the cell that it came from. It has changed genetics that's part of why it can keep living and keep dividing. It also takes over other cells and damages tissue. So cancer cells are basically cells that have had something go wrong in their DNA and then they continue to grow and grow and our body can't kill them. Normally what happens with a cell like that when we're young and healthy and our immune systems are excellent is our immune systems every day kill cells that become cancer. They just go eat them up or they destroy them. That do become or would become? That they, they become like a cancer cell. Their DNA changes. Okay. They, they, they have an ability to continue to divide, but our immune system kills them. So that these, happens these all the time. So these mutated cells start to replicate, and their replication system is so fast and so massive, they start to kill off or crowd out healthy cells that surround them. Right, and damage and damage other organs. And sometimes they, they metastasize and go to other parts of the body okay. through the bloodstream, the lymph, or they or in some cancers like um, ovarian, it goes directly to other tissues and mm-hmm. then goes into the lymph system. So there are many ways that it can divide and go to the other parts of the body and cause damage. But the real fact is if your immune system is intact, if you have all the white cells, killer T killer cells. Mm-hmm. That's what's wrong with people with AIDS is they don't have T killer cells. They can't kill off cancer cells. It's also what happens to us as we age is that loss of hormones causes loss of the T killer cells. And these are white cells that kill cancer cells. They're like policemen in your body that go around mm-hmm. and find and arrest the criminals, mm-hmm. and apprehend them and and And, get and destroy rid of them. them. And that happens all the time. I mean, in breast cells, breast cells are, are dividing and they become abnormal and your body kills off the abnormal ones. So right. it's, it's, no, it's no surprise that as our immune system is, is actually impaired, and there, we'll talk about the things that impair your immune system and increase your risk of cancer, but as your immune system decreases with age, then we are more likely to get cancers because our immune system isn't either active enough, it doesn't have enough cells, or it's they're not, they don't have the activity to go kill off all the cancer cells that develop every day. Mm-hmm. So I don't want you to 
sit around and think about all the cells that are becoming abnormal. Your body's taking care of them since you were young. So this isn't something that you should worry about, but you should worry about your immune system <coughs> and making sure it is as, as well uh, fed and well cared for as mm -hmm. anything else in your body because that is your wall against cancer. So how do you take care of your immune system? I mean, if, if you were to say that to me, you need to do a better job taking care of your immune system, I wouldn't know how to understand that message okay. in, in terms of concrete modalities. What does Let me one do? translate. Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about the things that decrease our immune system. Okay. And then we can talk about how to, how to in each case, how to, to combat that. Right. So one, one of the things that decreases our immune system, let's go with the worst one, is smoking. Okay. Smoking actually damages cells. It actually, in, all over your body, not just in your lungs, it causes cells to become abnormal, and it, it increases the load that your immune system has to kill. It also suppresses your immune system. Okay, so okay. it suppresses all those T cells. T killer cells are shut down because, because that's what nicotine and carbon monoxide do when you smoke a cigarette. So it shuts down your ability to kill off these cells and it changes more cells all the time. So smoking is a double whammy. Mm -hmm. So Not that's, just the risk of lung cancer. No, per it's a se. risk of bladder. Almost every tissue in the body is affected. Mm -hmm. You can have a cancer anywhere because you smoke. What? So that is the biggest thing that you can do something about. You can stop smoking. Mm -hmm. Now, that doesn't mean you, when you stop smoking that your risk is not increased. It depends on how long you smoked. Right. Your body still is being suppressed for many years after you stop smoking. But the sooner you stop, the better. Well, and, and smoking, it, we've done a lot to warn people that smoking and lung cancer are correlated, yes. significantly correlated. But there are other illnesses from smoking that aren't cancerous, like COPD. Right. I mean, you, you can... Swiss cheese lungs. Your lungs are all are like little uh, grapes on a vine, but they're hollow grapes. And that, that increases the amount of surface area that you breathe oxygen from. Right. So what happens with smoking to your lungs is it makes all those little tiny grapes into big Swiss cheese holes, and that decreases the surface area for oxygen to come across. So you're out of breath all the time. You're carrying an oxygen tank. And it's over years and years of smoking that, that you get this. Right. And some people are more resistant to it than others. Some people can smoke three packs a day their whole lives and not get well, cancer and not yeah, get that. It's the, that doesn't mean you won't. The ability of the lung tissue to filter the oxygen out of the air that you breathe. I mean, the, the air that you breathe has contaminants and pollutants and nitrogen and oxygen and water and a whole bunch of other things. So you breathe it in and then the lung tissues filter all that garbage mm -hmm. out and just pull the oxygen in mm -hmm. to put in the bloodstream to carry and feed all the cells in your body. So if you put smoke in your system, mm -hmm. in addition to the contaminants in the air you breathe, yes. then you're clogging up the plumbing. Yeah, and you're overloading your system so that you can't, white cells also gobble up the, the uh, tar and nicotine mm -hmm. and carry it away so that you can clean it up. You're overloading your system. You can't possibly okay. uh, do that for years on end. But you also don't get as much oxygen. Oxygen is a double-edged sword. We've talked about that before. You need oxygen and good oxy oxygenization to live a healthy life, to repair your cells, to have energy for everything to work. But oxygen also causes oxygenation of some of the cells and causes free radicals. We've all heard about that. Free radicals are parts of the, of the cell or, or uh, chemicals that actually cause damage to cells. Mm -hmm. They damage the DNA and they damage the outside of the cell as well, all over your body. So free radicals aren't good. This is one of those cases where we need oxygen, but it also does some damage in our body. That's one of the no wins. Smoke, I would never tell somebody to smoke because it does increase free radicals and it decreases oxygen as well. So it's a, it's a double whammy in the, in and the negative it, it side. Adversely or negatively leverages your immune system. So right. over time, your body's ability to, to practice immunological function, to, mm -hmm. to protect you from infections and mm -hmm. diseases, declines as you age. 
Right. And if you accelerate that decline by smoking, mm -hmm. then you increase your level of risks every single cigarette that you take. That's right. So stopping decreases your risk and decreases the amount or increases the amount of time you'll be cancer free. Right. But it doesn't mean that you would never get cancer. And there's a lot of other reasons to get cancer as well besides smoking. But smoking is the most obvious and it's one of the things that you can just, you can okay. stop. So what else can you do then to protect your immune system or to improve its functionality? So another Another thing that we always talk about is nutrition. Mm -hmm. Nutrition is something we have to feed ourselves, we have to feed our body. Very healthy, no, no sprays, wash all your vegetables and fruit. You don't want to get the pesticides. The pesticides. All right. So Rachel you want- Carson silent spraying. Yeah, yeah, you don't, <laughs> that's right. So you, you want to make sure that all your food is whole food and not fast food because there's a lot of contaminants, preservatives, pre preservatives yes. in that. And that salt. Are, yeah, and salt that don't help both your immune system and don't help your cells be healthy. When he cells are not healthy, when they're not fed appropriately, they become cancerous more easily. And when okay. you don't have enough of the vitamins and minerals, which we use supplements oftentimes to give us back what we aren't eating, but if you don't have those, then oftentimes the cells become abnormal just because you don't have enough nutrients for the cell. So, so for, for an example, we live in the Midwest of the United States in what you call an iodine sink. Yeah, I call, I call it a goiter, a goiter zone. A goiter zone, yeah. <laughs> Because that's, that's thi a thyroid mm -hmm. uh, goiter. Lack of thyroid is from lack of iodine mm -hmm. in this area. So Because it's not in the soil, right. so it's not in the food. Right. And if you eat food from this area, you're not going to get and enough iodine water. in your system. And drink water. Uh, so so you then you don't have that. enough. You don't have enough of the nutrients mm -hmm. to take care of the thyroid. That's a specific thing. But iodine works all over the body, and so does the thyroid. But specifically, that increases your risk of having hy hyperplastic or lots of thick kind of cells, mm -hmm. growths on the mm -hmm. thyroid, but also getting thyroid cancer. So it's important to replace your iodine. That's one of the nutrients we need, mm -hmm. and one of the nutrients in certain parts of the country we don't get. So that's important. Let's go over inflammation because okay. inflammation is another risk. Most of us who don't have an autoimmune disease, you know what that, an autoimmune disease is like rheumatoid arthritis or lupus or, or psoriasis, uh, MS, all of those diseases are diseases of inflammation. That's major okay. inflammation or arthritis. That's inflammation of so the So inflammation joints. is swelling? Inflammation is swelling, redness, heat. It's where all your white cells go and attack a tissue or attack, it's supposed to be attacking a foreign bacteria or virus or a foreign object. But in fact, when you have an autoimmune disease, it's attacking your own tissues. It gets, it's a confused immune system. Okay. So it's, and there it provides all of these little white cells put out chemicals that increase the redness, the heat, it's meant to heal us in autoimmune disorders, it destroys the tissue that it's attacking. So it's confused. So that's a lot of inflammation. That is one of, that's one of the things that then causes you to have damaged cells and then your immune system is not attacking the, what it should attack, which are cells that are becoming cancerous. So that puts you at risk, higher risk, for getting cancer in some other area. Just like the blue screen of death on a computer. Windows has encountered a problem and needs to shut down. Yeah. <laughs> or, yeah. Or it just, it's like a virus and it just keeps going. Mm -hmm. And it destroys everything in its path. But inflammation can also be, uh, you can also get inflammation from trauma. So if you hit your knee and it swells, that's right. inflammation. Okay. Some of us have inflammation genetically or because we're obese have inflammation throughout our bodies. And that actually damages our blood vessels and causes uh, plaque to develop. But the worst part about inflammation is, is it's misdirecting your white cells to kill something it shouldn't or attack a tissue that's necessary. And then all of your white cells are doing one thing and, they sh and, and they're destroying your good tissues and they're not attending to the cancer cells. So misdirected immune system. Hyperactive immune system too. But some of the ways that we deal with this is to give somebody steroids, decrease it. Inflammation. Decrease the inflammation, but that also suppresses your immune system. So when you take steroids, or if you're under high stress 
life, you make a lot of steroids, which is cortisol, that either way, whether you take it or you make it, you're suppressing your immune system. So you're decreasing the activity of so the it's, immune so system. So a cortisone shot, if you have a so shoulder that aches and is mm -hmm. sore and, and really hurts, they sometimes give you a cortisone to shot. decrease the inflammation in your joint. And they use cortisol, right. which is a natural hormone the body produces, mm -hmm. but they they bring an artificial form and inject it in that spot right. to decrease the inflammation in that spot. Right, and that's not as big a deal. If you put mm -hmm. it into a joint, it mm -hmm. isn't usually absorbed throughout and it doesn't get into big high levels that would affect the rest of your body. But if you take Medrol because you have allergies, or mm -hmm. if you take, if and an allergy is a hyperactive immune system and, and it's directed at something in your environment, but it still gives you symptoms. So. When we give people steroids throughout their body, either IV, IM, or oral, not in the joint, those are less likely to do any harm, then that allows your white cells to uh, be suppressed and shut down. They don't, and they're not out there killing the cancer cells that are changing every day. So somehow there, there's... It's too it's much like inflammation's your, bad, Your too alarm little. system goes off inappropriately or inadvertently. Right. And then it starts just churning out white blood cells that are supposed to go and attack the, the source of the infection, but they get misdirected to some other source of inflammation. Mm -hmm. and but not to the cells that are becoming cancerous. not to the cells that are becoming cancerous, mm -hmm. and so they, they are rerouted to the wrong address. That's right. That's and, autoimmune disease. Okay. And then when, there, when, you have, when you have too much inflammation and we're treated for that condition, right. then too much of a steroid shuts the system down. So it's not killing it's it's not killing any cancer cells. So so what about things like heavy metals? Okay, so those heavy metals are in in our environment and they've been getting worse ever since we started producing things in factories. We have we have um, byproducts that are dangerous to our environment. We throw them in the rivers, we throw them in groundwater contamination. Groundwater. Like the whole state of West Virginia in the last month yeah. has been shut down from drinking the water. Uh, the only thing they've been able to do with is flush their toilets because there was a chemical spill. And I don't know that it mm -hmm. had heavy metals in it, but it got into the water system. Mm -hmm. It had and something they said dangerous in it. It's not safe for it. human consumption. They, right. they Either that's exactly a bacteria or virus or right. so something in, uh, that's infectious or something that is. Um, a poison, a heavy well, metal, is something that... So one of the things the government does to protect you is they monitor, for instance, the health of the fish in the lakes and the rivers. Mm -hmm. Because when heavy metals are polluted into the water stream, mm -hmm. then it gets into the fish, and you eat the fish, your body can't digest that or process it out, so it, it builds up in your It stays in your body. So heavy metals are metals that you. stay in your body, and over time, right. they collect, and then they damage cells, and then that causes cancer. Yeah. So that's another one of the things you have to be, I mean, we can't fix our environment. We've made, we've, the green movement has been really good at helping us try to clean up the environment, the right. air's cleaner, the catalytic converters, uh, all the things that we've kept lead out of our water. We've kept right. mercury, Acid hopefully, rain. out of our water, but the rest of the world hasn't. And right. we're still eating food from the rest of the world. So we're right. still getting this from right. other places. It's really hard to control this kind of thing. It's kind of an invisible um, foe that you have to you have to kind of worry about. And if you can, if you do have a very high level, which you can test in your hair, then you can go undergo a kind of. I don't suggest medical chelation because that's dangerous for your kidneys, but I suggest a nutritional chelation, and that is with vitamins, other other vitamins, minerals combinations they actually attach to the heavy metals and bring them out much more more subtly. So, so it's they not- They help your body get rid of- Rid the of the heavy metals. That it wouldn't get rid of normally. Right. And, and then genetic issues. Some people have mutated genes or they mm -hmm. have genes that are susceptible to mutation mm -hmm. that can cause cancers. Right, and there, there are, you've always heard family history. Family history of two uh, two female relatives with breast cancer if you're if you're right. female then if they're within one two generations like grandparents or parents then that is that is a risk factor for a woman to get breast cancer it doesn't mean she will it means that she probably has the genes either the BRCA1 or BRCA2 gene that causes her to get cancer when she doesn't have as much of these external 
problems right. like she may not have a high cortisol Smoking, or alcohol, she doesn't cortisol. smoke, yeah. she doesn't drink, she doesn't do anything wrong, but her genes mm -hmm. are putting her at risk for this. So that means where somebody else might never get cancer or might get it when they're 90, she might get it when she's younger. Mm -hmm. But just because you have two relatives in your family history doesn't mean you have the gene. They could have gone to somebody else, or they could not have been passed on. And, and it's not a death, you, death sentence. If you don't have the genetic predisposition, and you've done everything right in terms of diet and exercise and consumption modalities and where you live and all of these things, you can still get cancer. Yes. But the chances of your dying from cancer are getting better every day. Yeah. Medical science is, is finding better ways to fight this disorder and help your body fight this disorder mm -hmm. so that you can live longer. That's right. And, and one of those better ways is through the replacement of hormones appropriately, appropriately. monitored by a physician. Non-oral estrogen, uh -huh. non-oral testosterone. I mean, the oral is, you know, doesn't help us prevent mm -hmm. cancer, but we, we're not so sure about it. We think it's, an, it's even. People who take oral estrogens only, not with Provera, but just straight estrogen, and those who take nothing actually have the same risk of getting breast cancer. It's just that... You, so the conclusion from that is one doesn't cause one the One doesn't other. cause the other. Exactly. So if you're worried about getting hormone replacements because it might cause cancer, all of the data suggests that that is not a risk that you need to worry about. That's right. Now, one of the things we do, though, when somebody has breast cancer, we actually will take them off estrogen mm -hmm. because a cell changes. Like we said, it changes when it gets cancer, and then its DNA is actually different. Sometimes it changes so that estrogen is an issue. Right. So once you have it, right. that's something different. But we're not sure about that. We're still doing research, right. and we, that may not even be true. But we're being careful right. by hold, which, which holding goes it back. Back to the introductory statement, you monitor this research regularly and mm -hmm. consistently so that your patient population has the benefit of what you know about what medicine knows. Right. That's right. And so, that's very important is the newest information, the best information that we can find. And I always look at it just like when WHI came out. Right. I looked at that and went, that isn't like my patient population. It right. doesn't fit. This information must be wrong. And then years later, they finally retracted it and said, oh, well, estrogen yeah. doesn't cause breast cancer. It was the Provera. So don't panic. Do some research. Talk to some people.